one thing that I just love too much about RPGs, and that is the ability, the capacity to feel that something is brand new every time you try something new, redundant as that may sound. What I mean by that is that every time you try a different build in an RPG, you feel that the game clicks different. It changes the whole perspective to you. And this is what it did for me. I have been trying tons and tons and tons of deals in Wolong, and the more I try them, the more I realize that they are all fun in their own way. But this specific build that I am going to show you right now is the most overpowered thing that I've tried out of all of the bunch that I've made. I am sure that I'm just going to keep making builds and I'm going to keep having a blast. But I want to share this one with you first because out of the bunch, this is the one that I thought to be the most powerful, engaging, to see. What is up, you damn gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful gamers? Welcome back to the playing games. This is Mario Kona in the internet where I like this is about RPGs, like the content, like the videos, super appreciated. No one's told you today, you're a gorgeous and beautiful person. You are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful, beautiful person. Now, that being said, let's begin with stats. There are some things that you can make in here. As a matter of fact, uh, some things that could potentially be different. But mainly, we're going to have Wood Virtue and Water Virtue. Again, what is Wood Virtue is going to give us? Wood Virtue is going to give you more health than the rest of the classes. We are going to be using Light Armor with this build, so that being said, we benefit quite a lot from having a little bit more HP. And uh, that being said, it's also going to give us uh, Spell Duration, which is something that we are most definitely going to be using with this build. As a matter of fact, that is one of the keystones, main keystones of the build. Having that uh, little bit extra more damage because of that extra Spell Duration, we're gonna be speaking about that later in the video. It's also going to give us more defense, now that is a downside of the build. You're not going to be defending that much with this build. As a matter of fact, what you want to do with this build is deflect. You are going to have uh, quite a lot of spirit defense, so since you already have it, you might as well take advantage of it. But just know that this build benefits from being a little bit more defensive at some extent because you get uh, more spirit by dodging, deflecting, and blocking. There's that. Water Virtue, I always had a love hate relationship with this stat mainly because it has stealth and then it is not that amazing stealth doesn't work as properly as it should work in this game that being said sometimes you will be able to get the chance to get a sneaky little kind of attack from the enemies while you're exploring one thing that should not be confused and you need to have in mind I've seen a lot of comments of people in my videos uh, stating this do not be confused about this, uh, Water Virtue is not going to give you Fatal Strike damage. It's going to give you Fatal Strike damage when you attack from uh, before an enemy can detect you. So, uh, Stealth affects the damage dealt by Fatal Strike to unaware enemies, only to Stealth enemies. This thing is not going to give you much damage on fatal strikes on aware or fighting enemies so just have that in mind another thing that this thing is going to give you is uh, deflect consumption so you are going to consume less spirit by deflecting so you can spam it a little bit better with this build it's not going to give you more iframes it's not going to make it easier for you to deflect i want to be very clear about that but it's going to consume less spirit, so you're going to be able to spam it a little bit more often. And we're actually going to be dodging as well with this build. That being said, our dodges are going to be less expensive because the dodges rely on deflect at the end of the day. It's also going to give you more range damage. I really did not use that thing that much, so there is that. That being said, let's talk about the weapons that we're going to be using with this build. And mainly it's going to be the pass sorts of aspiration. You get this. I do believe by maxing out Liu Bei's uh, allegiance and it's going to have A plus affinity on A plus scaling on wood virtue and well A minus scaling on wood virtue and A plus scaling on water virtue for a total of 590 damage out of the stats that I have right now you're basically going, going to be um, using your points to scale the damage of this bad boy what is going to make this so beautiful, amazing, gorgeous, 
and one of the most broken and overpowered things that I have seen ever in this game is going to be endless flowering. So endless flowering swings your weapon in front of you while holding down the arts input you're going to have infinite block. So you, you're invincible. Hence thumbnail and title of the video. As soon as, uh, as long as you have this thing active and you have uh, enough spirit gauge, you cannot be touched, at least not by basic attacks. There is some kind of degree of mastery when it comes to this thing, you are going to have to learn to master it. When it comes to basic enemies, if you can get them against the wall, <laughs> as you can see me right now, more or less things sunset against this wall, you basically have the battle won. You're never going to get interrupted and you can just stun lock them to that and they are not going to be able to do anything because if they manage to get outside from the animation, they cannot attack you because you are infinite blocking, right? You're infinite blocking this thing. The only thing that can interrupt this thing is going to be a fatal strike, which is why it requires a degree of mastery to actually properly use this thing. The more you play the game, you will realize that the enemies have some kind of patterns. Some enemies like to spam their fatal strikes, some enemies do not like that much. For example, general. Generals are uh, big, huge enemies, they love to spam the fatal strike. With the rest of them, you're safe. So when you're fighting against a bunch of enemies, it is actually a nice idea to use it. Now this is a little bit more, a little bit more on luck side. As you can see right here, the beckoning pine. What it does is that it gives you somewhat of iframe animation and then deals damage. It's very powerful. And if you're able to get your pair source of aspiration, which is going to be random with this beckoning pine, it's going to make your life so much easier because I do not know why, dude. I really just do not know why, but this thing, it staggers the enemy in just one pulses of martial art. As you see me doing the, during the entire rendition of the video, I just I do not do not know how it works, <laughs> but it's just so broken. So the weapon in itself, it's very 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 beautiful. Now the night owl cane, we're not going to be using this thing that much. I still plan to make a build out of this thing, but uh, the other day we're just using this thing to have the status armor set, which is going to be. Beautiful to have in mind that for this armor set you're also going to have to use the accessory This is part of the armor set, right? So What this armor set is going to give us it's going to be a Enemy status effect accumulation We deal more status effect towards the enemies to be precise more plus 3.8 percent power drop Upon fatal strike on the enemy, gives power drop to enemy when landing a fatal strike, decreases damage, attack dealt to enemies. Nice, very nice, but not a main core of the enemy. This thing, on the other hand, the negative duration on enemies, plus 3.4%. That is going to be amazing. Damage amplification upon fatal strike, that is going to be gorgeous, but as you can see, damage to enemies with negative effects plus 10.6 percent and this is where the build is going to start to shine because this right here we're going to be making a ice build the ice is going to detain the spirit gain from the enemy and it's also going to make them a little bit more uh sluggish it's not going to be as powerful as it was in neo with sloth this is the equivalent so it makes them go a little bit slower not that much, but just enough for you to, to keep spamming your attacks. What we're going to have on our armor, and what is going to synergize with the BL and why this thing is going to be so broken, is that uh, on the uh, damage side of the armor, we're going to place damage to enemies, spirit uh, damage to enemies, with uh, negative effects. We're going to have ice attack power. Ice attack power is going to also increase the ice accumulation of the enemies. Chill accumulation on the enemies as well. And negative effect duration on the enemies. So, as a total, we have roughly... Let me see if I can find the, uh, the uh, thing right here. There we go. As a total, we're going to have a total of 102 ice attack power if you place ice attack power on weapons, armors, bows, and whatnot. We're also going to have 
our... Let me see... What is it that I am looking for? Damage to enemies with negative effects. That is going to be a little bit higher, it's just that I have them mixed up right here. You shouldn't mix this bad boys right here. But I did just add a little bit more versatility. At the end of the day, my testing proved to be more effective to have damage to enemies with negative effects. So on and so forth. Now, the elemental damage is not going to be important. What is going to be important is going to be the chill accumulation on the enemies. As you can see, 29.2% uh, as well as 10% from enemy status effect accumulation. So that's roughly 40%. If we add the ice attack power accumulation, that's roughly 60% um, with, to, to some extent. And then the negative effect duration on enemies, that's going to be 16.4%. Now what that means is that basically the gameplay loop it's always always most of the enemies are going to be are not going to be resistant to ice. If you find an enemy that is resistant to ice you're not going to have that much status effect accumulation on the enemies but you are just going to have more than enough to use lightning. So for example ice, uh, I'm sorry water based enemies they are going to be very susceptible to thunder which is the only enemies that are going to be resistant to ice. So for 80% of the enemies in the game you're going to be using ice damage, ice enchanted weapon and for the rest of the enemies which are water based you're going to be using lightning weapon. And basically that is how the build works. Now let me tell you a little bit about the gameplay loop. What this bad boy is going to use to, to, to do is going to, it's going to allow you to stun lock basic enemies. They are never going to be able to touch you. When it comes to bigger enemies, that is where it gets interesting because you cannot stagger them, and they cannot stagger you while you are in the en in the animation of the the weapon, which is so very powerful. You are going to learn a little bit about when this is going to be like a guessing game. It's going to be like a 50-50. Do not be greedy. Just use it with moderation. Because if you, uh, if they start doing the, their fatal strike and you are still on the animation of the attack, they are going to beat your ass. <laughs> Do have in mind that also this is like armor that we are using so you are able to get away from enemies harm and to have control of the battlefield as you see me doing in these little clips that I am uh, that I have been showing you so far so overall for most of the enemies what you want to do is just immediately cast your eyes and trust me one hits or two tops that is going to be more than enough to place a negative effect on the enemy do have in mind that due to all of the status effects that we have we have more damage on enemies that have a status effect build up we also have more duration for the status effect so as soon as you as you are able to place the chill on the enemy it's never going to get rid of it right so that is basically how the build works. It's very powerful, it's very fun, it's dual blades, everybody loves dual blades. If you like the content, like the videos, super appreciate it, no one told you today, you're a gorgeous and beautiful person. You are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful person, subscribe to the channel before you close the door, I'll be seeing you got them gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one, and have a beautiful, beautiful day. Goodbye.